I'm standing in the middle of the woods of a popular metro park just a couple miles south of downtown Columbus. I'm all alone and it's still early, not quite 5 a.m. I look around and take it all in. We've been blessed to live in a beautiful world. I inhale slowly and take in the fresh air. I pause and say a quick prayer. And then I start down the path into the woods. And like stepping into another world, a much worse world, I begin walking through trash, stepping over bottles and cans, debris, just the human filth starts to overtake me. A little farther now, I come up to a few tents that are still left. And again, I'm all alone, 5 a.m., it's dark and completely silent. I'm quite scared. I don't know if I'm ready for what I'm going to experience this morning. And I don't know if what I'm doing is right. So I call out to announce myself. Outreach, it's Ben. Are you guys up yet? That little voice in my head says, please don't answer. Please don't respond. Sure enough, they're up. Hey, Ben, what's up? They were up, and they were waiting for me, but they weren't quite ready. They call out, hey, just give us 10 minutes to get motivated. Getting motivated for this family of homeless people living in the tent meant they had to look down at their arm, find a vein that still works, and stick a needle in their arm, injecting heroin in their body so they felt well enough to get out of the tent that morning. I knew all well that I wasn't out there to work on that issue. That wasn't going to be the day that they found help. That wasn't going to be the morning that they were able to get over their addiction. That morning was about something else. That morning was about me being there for my friends, being there to support a family that had no one else, a family that has nothing left. Because that morning, that family was getting evicted, evicted from their tent in the woods. They weren't doing anything terrible. They weren't harming anybody. They weren't stealing. They were out there trying to make it, trying to survive. But nearby, in a nice luxury apartment, sitting very comfortable, a guy had to look down on them, walking down the railroad tracks, carrying their bags, looking disheveled, and didn't want that in his neighborhood. Enough phone calls to the right people, and their fate was sealed. They were getting evicted. Crews would come in, remove anything that was left, bulldoze land. Police would be there to arrest anyone left. So the solution that we could come up with, the best plan, will pack up their stuff in garbage bags, put it in the vehicle, throw their home, a tent, fold it up on top of our truck, and drive a couple miles down the road to another set of woods. Isn't that ridiculous? What am I in the business of moving the homeless from one camp to another? The reality is they had nowhere else to go. So I gave them their space, and I stepped away for 10 minutes. So I work as a patient advocate for Mount Carmel Outreach's street medicine and mobile medical coach team. We provide free health care to the homeless, the underserved, the unsheltered, and we target the most chronically homeless, most difficult people to serve. We take a doctor or nurse, medications and supplies out on the land, and we build relationships with these people, and we love them, and they become part of our family, and we just want to see them succeed. Let me introduce this family. Let me let you know about this family living in Columbus. Three generations living in homelessness, struggling with addiction every day. Grandma is 78 years old. Can you imagine your grandmother living in a tent? No air conditioning during the summer? No heat in Ohio's winter? I just, it breaks my heart every time. I just don't know if I'm going to go out there and that's going to be the morning that I find her dead. But sure enough, every time she greets me with a smile, she calls me sweetie, cutie pie, you know, just like anybody else. We try to small talk about the weather, but then it gets onto the problems. Her health is not great. We don't even know the extent of her issues because she never gets out of the tent, never leaves the property. That means she's not showering. You know, she uses the bathroom in the woods. It just breaks my heart. Picture your grandma going through that and visit, visiting her in a tent. She shares the tent with her daughter at 53 years old. She's about 5'7 and weighs less than 100 pounds. Every day she's withering away and gets worse. Across the camp in another tent, the granddaughter at 34. She's got a big personality. She'll make you laugh. She's so funny. But on a bad day, she'll be cursing me. Get out of here. It's not the morning. It's not the time. She shares a tent with her boyfriend. 
he runs the camp, he sets the rules, and he's just a good guy. He's just like anybody else. He's got a family of his own, a daughter, and they have a wonderful dog. They'll eat before them. They make sure that dog's cared for, and that dog's going to love them no matter what. A few months earlier, there was another person in the camp, and thankfully he's not there anymore. At 14 years old, the other grandson was living in the tent with them. Fortunately, Children Protective Services was able to intervene, and he's with a foster family in Newark, growing up fast without his family. But this multi-generational homelessness has become normal for him, and he would rather be in a tent with his family. So my goal for this talk this evening is to just give an opportunity to share what I get to experience, the other side of homelessness, the real side, the human side of homelessness. And I want to change your perception about some of the homeless people you see in the city every day by sharing the story of this family and by giving a response to some common perceptions. So what's some perceptions we hear? These people have chosen this. They've chosen to be homeless. I've even heard that they deserve it. Sure, many of them have made some bad choices. Sure, many of them have gone down the wrong path and done things that they probably shouldn't have. But nobody chooses to live in a tent. Nobody chooses what comes with being homeless, the devastating life that they lead. That morning, the granddaughter, after finally feeling well enough to get out of the tent, like many other smokers, you want a cigarette in the morning. She thinks back to the night before when she had a half-smoked cigarette that she flicked into the trash. I lent her my flashlight so she could search for it, digging through the trash at 5 a.m. for a cigarette, a half-smoked cigarette with no luck. What dignity do you have left? You lose so much of yourself when you become homeless, and you don't choose that. Nobody would choose to lose that. And who knows how long they've been homeless in their journey. They may say they choose to be homeless now, but how many times have they struggled to make it and given up? Another perception that we hear, they're all just a bunch of low-life junkies, druggies, alcoholics. They're worthless. They're draining society. At 78 years old, this woman spent 60-some years working and leading a wonderful life. I met people that have master's degrees, own businesses, have done amazing things, and it's just a short trip and fall, and a long fall into homelessness. They tell me amazing stories. They're great people. When you can have that opportunity to really connect with who they are and share their life and share my own life with them, amazing things. You can hear amazing things. They became so much part of my family, and I would come home and tell my wife stories, and I would share things that's going on in my world that it came to a point where I had to introduce them. My wife and I took pizza out and had dinner and sat there and shared time with them to get to know them. They're a part of my family. They're not low-life junkies. And they could be a part of your family. And you could have a grandmother, a mother, a daughter, or a son that ends up being homeless. Another perception. The help's there. The resources are available. If they were just willing to take the help, it's easy. They can solve their own problems and move on. The reality is, is it's not easy, especially when you're struggling with heroin addiction. The mother whose son got taken by Children Protective Services, she's got a fast track. She's set up. They worked out a deal. You can go to rehab, dedicated bed, finish rehab, get things all set up and right. They'll pay and help them get into an apartment, help them get set up, and their son can come back. They can live together. It's been months now, and I ask her, are you ready to do this? Is now the time? And she's just not ready. She's not motivated. She tells me about the cycle of her life. You, you hope you have enough heroin left in the morning to get motivated to get out of the tent. You walk down the street to panhandle, fly a sign, try to make enough money to buy more heroin for the afternoon, and you panhandle the rest of the day and make, spend what you can on heroin, maybe hopefully eat for that day, maybe not. By the end of the month, the money that they do receive, the check, the Social Security disability check, it's gone in a couple weeks. The end of the month rolls around, and their dope boy lets him run up a bill. So first of the month, and the money hits, he's there ready to collect, and they're stuck. They're already in that hole. It's not easy. And even the people that do get to rehab, the outcomes aren't great. The numbers aren't great. And you solve your addiction problem, and what do you have left? A terrible criminal history, felony record, multiple evictions, all your friends and family are still struggling, it won't be long until you slip back into that habit. Another common perception, something that we hear, just give the homeless a home. 
and that'll solve all their problems. It does work for a few, but if you take a broken person living in a tent and put that broken person in a home, put them in a home that they don't get to choose, a home that may not be in a good part of town, a home that may separate them from anybody that does help them, and they're still broken, sometimes worse off than they were before. I work with pretty much everybody that I can that tries to help the homeless. And the real problem is that the situation is getting worse. Every day there's more and more people becoming homeless. There's very few efforts for prevention. There's great opportunities and a lot of work being done once the issue occurs, but it's very difficult to stop the flow into homelessness. So I want to leave you with one challenge for today something that's really not hard, it's easy to do, something that I guarantee will make a difference in every homeless person's life, every time you meet them. I want you to treat them with dignity. Look them in the eye and see them for the people that they were meant to be. Try to see their humanness, not their homelessness. Thank you so much for having me here.